No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega.
Father, we thank you for this afternoon. You have never gathered men and did nothing. Even this afternoon, you're doing something in us, for us, to the glory of your name and expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Come on, celebrate Jesus this morning. Choir, thank you very much. You may take your seats. Tell me, how is your week? What did you do during the week? Huh? What did you do? You just ate food. Anniversary is here. Tell your neighbor that the biggest meeting on the continent is here and you're going to be a part of it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes. We're going to write history for Jesus. Not for ourselves. For Jesus. Praise the Lord. I don't know whether some of you understand this, but it humbles me for us to be alive to see what God is doing in our times. And all of you are as a result of somebody having invested their time. Either somebody referred you to the ministry or, you know, somebody I care to teach, but somebody is responsible for where you are. So that's why when it comes to anniversary, men's conference, women's conference, those big conferences, like any other day, it's, it's important to us. It means a lot that you mobilize. Write a list of 10 people, you know. Take advantage of every platform God has given you to preach or further the gospel. Some of you are on YouTube. You're going to watch this. Or you watch YouTube. Make sure you like. I'm told that when you like, or everybody should be subscribed by now. If you're on YouTube, you should be subscribed to Fanero channel. And make sure every sermon that goes up, you like. Because I'm told when you like, the algorithm sort of favors you to recommend this video to another person. You never know your one tick might be recommended to somebody going to commit suicide in Russia. You understand? So it's a good thing that you what? You, you do whatever you can for, for the gospel. That day, we are believing God for more than 100,000 people. At least 100,000 people. Hey! On one ground. And we're going to see it in Jesus' name. Bring the sick, bring the lame, bring the crippled, bring the dead. Yeah. Because that day God is going to heal. He's going to heal. He's going to heal. He's going to heal. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I bless your offerings? Father, I thank you for the generosity of your people and we worship you this morning with our giving. Supply all their needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, Amen. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, I am glad to again touch a very important aspect in our walk of faith. As I tell you, always one of my mandates, major mandates on, on earth is to preach faith. I love preaching faith. I feel God has given me something so deep there among the things God has um, entrusted me with. And so every time a light goes on, something stirs in my spirit and it works for me. I know then that it is an instruction for me as of when God approves for me to be able to share some of these things uh, for your edification. We are having quite a lot of trouble, especially in the generation or the people that are, you know, on the journey of understanding faith. And those, those, those questions that keep coming through because we have applied ourselves to faith. You see, you can live a life that is so passively absent, you know, from faith, even though you are in the faith, but from participating, being an active uh, participant in what God is doing through faith and simply let things be and live like the rest of the world does. And I've seen some believers live like that. 
when they get called for flu or any disease, they, they don't dare to call God, or to call on God or speak or pray. No, it's, it's, they, they respond to everything as the world responds to it. And I mean people who don't know God, they respond to disease. These believers respond to disease, poverty, and any other trouble that comes like people who don't know God. The Bible says do not be like the Gentiles. That means it's possible, even as a believer, to live like a Gentile. Ephesians 4, 17. Therefore I say and testify in the Lord that you henceforth not walk as the Gentiles. So it's possible for you to live like an unbeliever. They live in the vanity of their minds. Having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God. They are separated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. You see? So they are disconnected from the life of God. They don't live and function according to the life of God. And he says, do not be like. It means you can be like a Gentile. Christianity is not just, it's not a religion. Christianity is an experience of relationship. It's, it's a relationship. It's an intimate relationship. And out of that relationship, then God starts to build your identity as you should start to look on him. The Bible says, and we behold like in a mirror the glory of God. And as we continue to behold like in the mirror, we are changed. We are metamorphosed. We are, transpo we are, we are trans trans translated into the very image and likeness from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. That's the essence of the gospel to make you understand who you are in God and consequently work that out for you to be likened to God. I know it's a very dangerous thing to say and I now be in trouble, but soon I'm going to preach it deliberately to be in trouble. I, 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 and I, I'll, I'll come with every consequence that comes with it. You see, when the Bible says, for I have said that ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. You see? Now you will understand why the Bible says, for Jesus found it no robbery to be like God, you know? He found it no robbery to be equal, sorry, with God. He found it no robbery. In other words, the world we live in, when you say that you and God are one. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What, 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 what did you say? Yet they know the prayer of Jesus Christ. They in me and I in you, hey, hey, that we, they may be made perfect in one. That they may be perfect in one. Are you following what I'm saying? So you are in God as God is in you. And that's the perfection of one. I, uh, I know I'm going to get in trouble, but don't worry. I'll teach it because some of us must understand that he that is joined with the Lord, eh? He that is joined with the Lord or unto the Lord is one spirit. I want you to understand what in, that, that oneness with the Father that we have. It doesn't mean that he breaks our relationship or the order. No, we know he's the head. Yeah, but we have a body. Are you following what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll teach about it very soon. It's not for this morning, but back to what I was trying to tell us. So we apply ourselves and and, 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 and give ourselves wholly to this work of faith. And then somebody says, oh, but this brother believed God for this healing and they didn't see the healing. This sister believed God for the marriage and it failed. They've believed God for a job and they've not gotten it, you know. And then so we now coin out this uh, interesting doctrine that, you know, when you ask God, he can either choose to give it to you or he can say no. Uh, I'm not going to give it to you. Or oh, he can tell you, wait. And then you ask the believer concerning what? You see, anything that touches the promise of God and the will of God because the Bible says, number one, he has made known unto us the mystery of his will. You, he has told you, has, he has given you the understanding and the right interpretation and application according to truth concerning his will. Having made known, Ephesians 1, 9, and to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. Now, there's somebody who says, oh, I don't know the will of God concerning my marital destiny. I don't know the will of God concerning my job. I don't know the will of God whether I should have children or not. I don't know the will of God whether I should have a job or I should go in ministry. You might be at that place 
not because you don't know, but because you don't know that it was given to you to know according to the word. So, your problem really is not that you don't know concerning your marital destiny. Your problem is that you don't know what God has said already concerning your marital destiny. When you get to know what God has already spoken, eventually you attune yourself and align and, you know, that very positioning will give you what God has promised by Christ. Are you following what I'm saying? So, the Bible says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. It means... Every area where you're struggling in faith is an area of knowledge. Not necessarily that thing in which you struggle. Okay? So number one, we know the will of God according to the Bible. And once the will is given, he says, for all the promises in him are yea and amen in him and to the glory of the Father. He says that the Paul, the Jesus Paul preached, Silvanus preached, the Jesus that Timotheus preached, there was not yea and nay in him. The one that was preached by these men. The ones we preach, the one we preach these days, or some of our people preach these days, has nay and yea, but the one Silvanus preached, Paul preached, Timotheus preached, there was not yea and nay. In him was yea. So all the promises of God are amen. They are amen. Yes. Amen means so be it. In him a year and in him a man unto the glory of the Father. In other words, everything God has promised according to his word, that's the integrity of his word. It is yes. So why didn't it work? Either you don't know that truth in your spirit. You've not conceived it in your spirit. You have it here in your head. It needs to get into your spirit for you to conceive it. Or you don't even know it at all in the first place. So then we start saying, oh, it wasn't the will of God. There are things that I've seen happening in the body of Christ, and they're not the will of God. And some Christians have actually swallowed hook, bait, and sink, saying, ah, ah, this is the will of God. It's happening because God wanted it this way. So it's important to know your word, to know the scriptures. What does God say? Why didn't it work? Because it was not faith. Faith cannot fail. At least all the proponents of that, the, the, the movements before either Asian or modern Christian history, all of them can agree to this one thing, that if it is faith, it will work. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, if it is faith, it will work. Yes, it will. So now we have to go on a journey of really building according to truth let God be true and every man a liar. I have chosen in my life to just believe what God has said in spite of what is happening in my life. And that's a decision one day you have to make. Some of you haven't, but that's a decision one day you have to make and say, you know what, in spite of what I see, feel, have tested, gone through, God is still true and every man a liar. Nothing which God has not spoken can I consider to be true except what he has said. And that's a decision of maturity. It's hard to make it, especially when you understand the implication. But eventually, eventually, as you continue to mature, God will require that trust to incline your ear to him, to lean your entire personality on him. Convinced, you know, I study in this portion of scripture that we usually pass in our mouths every day, like, like chewing gum, right? Because sometimes the scriptures can come so through you for so many years that you start to lose the revelation because of your familiarity. That is why I have preached a sermon and instructed us once never to lose our wonder. Let the word of God strike you every time. When your spirit stays open to receive from God every time, you'll be amazed at the things you see. One day he's ministering to me about this thing, which I could actually preach in a sermon if you speak to me nicely. He, he, you know this usual portion of scripture where he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. That thing one day was amplified to my spirit in a way I can never explain. Probably let me help you understand this. Maybe you're here and you're dealing with a, a business that is sinking every day. And then you look at it economically, you look at it financially, you look at all the mathematics around this, this business, and then you come to the conclusion, according to the report that you have prepared or has been prepared 
for you by, you know, a reputable, you know, company, financial uh, consultancy. Then you come to that end and say, I think this business actually, according to what we have seen, is coming to an end. That's your own understanding. There's probably somebody in this room and they say you're HIV positive. And they say, you know, this disease is incurable. That's your own understanding. Are you seeing how deep this is? That's your understanding. You know, if you one time they brought a, la a lady, brought a child to me whom they said was uh, he was autistic and he was all on this spectrum and he's this and he won't talk, he won't go to school. If he will, he'll have to go to a special school, special needs school. And they tell me all these things. I tell this lady, <laughs> that's what they know. That's not what God says. It's what they know. Yeah, I know it's incurable. Yes, I said in the morning, every morning, just wake up and thank God. And look at your son and say, my boy is okay. His brain works right. He will go to a normal school. He will earn grades like any other normal child and grow up to be a very successful. And speak that every day, every time you have an opportunity to speak over your child. And she did so. They put the child in special schools, those special needs things. She continued speaking until the, the people themselves started saying, but no, this boy can't go in a normal school. Are you following what I'm saying? The boy starts talking. Yes, he spoke late, but he started speaking. Whom they say that are this one, we don't see them speak. That's their understanding. So many times we, you, you can feel something and, and you, you build life around your understanding. This is how I understand it. This is how I think. And then you, you zero God to where you think. So deep. So the Bible says, do not lean. It means, when the Bible speaks of the word trust, the Amplified Version uses leaning your entire personality, relying on him. That's you. you. You choose which side you're going to lean. Are you going to lean this side or lean this side? Proverbs 3, 5 again. Lean on, comma, trust in and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight and understanding. So where you choose to put your energies and your weight is where it will work. Some of us say, ah, we trust in God, but we're leaning on science. We're leaning on past experiences. We're leaning on people's opinions. We're leaning on people who only have a degree, a diploma, a master's, one PhD, against the God who knows all. Tell your neighbor, lean on God, not your understanding. Hallelujah. So oh, why didn't it work? Because it wasn't faith. So we are on a journey. I'm learning as you're learning. We are on a journey of understanding what faith is. And every day, layer upon layer, God starts to unravel and reveal. And then we adopt, evolve and mutate to that very image and stature from glory to glory. Today is one of those days. Romans chapter 4, very famous scripture. And I believe many of you have read, but tonight I believe God is going to, you know, break so much for you up to understand what he's saying here. Romans 4, 17, he says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. I'm reading the Amplified. He was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to, dead, to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Okay? If you read that in the KJV, he says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even the God which quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Let me begin this way. God comes to Abraham and his wife. And they are barren. They have no children yet nothing manifested then he tells him i have made thee a father i have made thee a father 
I have made thee a father. To a man who has not yet given birth yet. Now, there's a scripture in 1 Peter 4, 11. He says, whoever speaks, or if any man should speak, if any man should speak, the Bible says, let him do so as one who utters the oracles of God. If any man should speak, the KJV says, let him speak as the oracle of God. Speak as God would speak it. Don't speak anything that God would not say. Are you following? When we're in our confessions of faith, which many of us are learning very well and that, you know, are doing so good at, and tonight I'm sharpening or pruning you even more to that place. God is saying, if any man should speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. In other words, speak as God has spoken or speaks. Don't speak what God wouldn't speak. Can God say, I have flu? Yeah. Answer me. Can God say, I have flu? If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. What God cannot speak, you should not speak. Tell your neighbor, what God cannot speak, you should not speak. That's very important for you to note. Very important. Tell them also how God speaks it is how you should speak it. You know, there's a difference between what you say and how you say it. Isn't it? Language and speech, those nuances matter in making meaning. And they define our places either of authority and function or a place of weakness and powerlessness. For example, if you walk to somebody and told them, I love you. That's, just, that's one word, isn't it? And then you walk to another person and told them, I love you. Who, who do you expect mostly to, well, to respond to your expressions? The former, the latter. Somebody said the latter. <laughs> no, it's an English issue. Okay, who do you expect to respond? The first one that I said, the first way I said it or the second way I said it? Ah, uh, you see, they've corrected it. <laughs> and the voice was loud meanwhile, it says the latter. <laughs> the latter. Uh, you see, so it's not just what is spoken and how it's spoken. If your parent called you and said, Peter, then you say, yes, ma. Or another call and said, Peter, say, yes, ma'am. You see, <laughs> if you're raised by my mother, something would be on your head in a few minutes. Yes. <laughs> something would wake you up. She, she had a way of waking you up. And so fast that you firstly first have to come to terms that you've actually been beaten because the brain has to first tell you, hey, I've actually been beaten. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? What God says and how he says it matters. So as the oracle, you speak what he says and how he says it. Yeah. In the understanding in which God would speak something. Oh, oh, oh. That's the understanding in which you should speak as the oracle. Now, he has given us an example of his speech in Romans 4.17. He told you, he is the God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And then the Lord told me something so powerful. He said, I call those things which be not as though they were. I don't call the things that are to be not. Did you get it? I don't call the things that are to be not. I call the things which be as though they were. Because the most important thing here is in the being. B-B-E. Being. 
human being. You be human, right? So now it says in him I live, move, and have my own being. What does that mean? Be, to be. To be or to become. So he says, I call the things which be not, right? As though they were. Things which be not as though they are. I call things that from nothing as though they were something. You understand what I'm saying? I don't call things not to be. In other words, if I want you rich, I'll not waste my time on trying to take poverty out. I'll not waste my time addressing poverty. He says, I will invest my time declaring wealth. Because I know once wealth is declared, poverty is done away with. It's like the principle of light and darkness. If you want to get darkness out of a room, you don't say, darkness, leave, light, come. No. The Bible says the light shineth in darkness. And darkness comprehended it not. Darkness cannot, it has no power to withstand you see you get in a room you switch on a light and once that light is on you don't tell darkness to flee so you have a problem with christians who read romans 4 17 but they address the darkness more than embracing the light you get it that's why your faith is not working you, you you're investing more time in in addressing the darkness than switching on the light. Praise the Lord Jesus. He calleth the things which be not as though they were. Go back to the story of Abraham. You'll understand, understand it better. This man's wife and him were barren. Isn't it? They were barren. So God didn't say, I rebuke barrenness. He, he didn't say, you are not barren. He told them what he wanted them to be. As though they were already it. That's how God speaks. Yes, you got it. That's how God what? Speaks. He calls the things that be not as though they were. Not, not the things that are as though they be not. In other words, you have two worlds. You have a world of truth where God dwells and you have a world of Facts where our canon nature functions. You have facts and you have truth. You wake up in the morning and you have a flu, you have a cough, you, 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 you have pain in your stomach, you have pain in your back or your knees are aching. That's a fact. It's not a truth. Are you following what I'm saying? Do you agree? It's not a truth. When you come to truth, there are things God has done by the word that shows your true place with God, but also how God sees you. You know, you see people here saying, but God, you look at me, don't you see I'm in pain? You understand? You have been pain. They are saying I'm in pain. God, don't you see that I'm in pain? No. The high priest you have, he understands that you're in pain. He relates that you're in pain. But that's not where he sees you. That's not where he sees you. He's touched by your infirmities. Yes, he, he, he's touched by your feelings. Because he was tempted in all points. But that's not where he sees you. He says, okay, I understand your pain. I am touched that you're in pain. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to break principles, truth, because you're in pain. Because I don't see you in pain. The vision I have towards you is different in truth. Are you following what I'm saying? If I have to heal you, I have to go back to where I see you. Not where I feel for you, but where you are by truth. You get my point? 
it has to go beyond what he feels for you to a place of where you are now if the bible says in isaiah he bore our sicknesses isaiah 53 verses 4 he bore our griefs that is read sicknesses uh-huh weaknesses and distresses and carried our sorrows and pains and punishment he bore he bore he carried he took away he took he carried your sickness he carried your oh he carried your sickness he carried your pain he carried your distress he carried your sorrow that doesn't that doesn't mean that you don't feel sick even if you feel sick it does not take away the fact that he carried it away that's truth so if jesus took away your sickness does he see you sick he doesn't see you sick he might understand your feeling of sick. he's touched by your sickness but he doesn't see you sick he's empathetic he, he he's sympathetic sorry but he's not there he's here he sees you healed he doesn't see you sick and to heal you, he says, you have to come from fact and ascend to truth. Are you following what I'm saying? Because I quicken the dead and I call those things which be not as though they are. If they asked Jesus, are you sick? He would say, no, he's not sick. Because he calls those things which be not as though they were. He still say. He was healed by my stripes. First Peter 2 24, he his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. By his stripes ye will be healed when you pray. You might be healed. Yes, because some people go to God hoping they might be. That's why you can't be healed. Because you're praying you might be healed. He says, by his stripes, ye were healed. So, your healing is not a question mark anymore. anymore. It's not a question mark anymore. Let's go and try this pastor. Maybe we shall heal. People who come to me to try, you won't be healed. Because the anointing on my life cannot be tried. Uh -uh. Are you following what I'm saying? Come to be healed. I gave a story in one of those services. There's a lady, uh, an old lady here. She came with a clutch. Coo. Coo. I loved her faith. She came with a clutch. I don't know that she's that motor woman is here. She even gave me a cow. She came with a clutch. And then she gave me this clutch and told me, Apostle, I don't know how or what you are going to do. But I'm not walking back crippled. I said, Mama, what do you mean? Exactly that. In fact, catch your cane. Pray, do everything you can do. But I'm not walking back with this stick. So do whatever you want. Eh? My God, faith was studying me. I said, what a faith. She didn't come to negotiate her healing. She came to manifest it. She knew she was healed. True to form, I laid hands on that woman. She walked back without a cane. Now that is faith. So he said, let's go and try. Maybe, maybe try Apostle Grace. You know, and some of you, may, you, you, you call me with those calls. Eh? You know, uh, my daddy doesn't believe, but I believe that you can heal him. No. Don't waste your time and mine. If you don't believe, let's not waste their time. Then you go to pray for the sick person. They, even the way they look at you, they look at you like... <laughs> don't, don't put ropes in our neck over people who have chosen not to believe God. If you had enough faith, then you fix it. I don't know your father more than, I, more than you know them. You know, but Apostle, you, you have faith. Exactly. The Bible says we've been given the measure of faith. You also have faith. You have faith also. Fix them. Fix them. Otherwise, you, you, you have to come and pray. I know she doesn't believe, but you come and pray in the same sentence. 
You know she does not believe, but you come and pray. So God would surprise her. You, you understand? He can surprise her without me. An angel can come in the room and still surprise her. Are you following what I'm saying? Faith is important. So instead of praying for their healing, pray for their faith. Pray for their faith. Don't say, oh God, heal them. No, pray for their faith because you're probably praying for a person when they heal, they'll kill people. No, pray for their faith. Are you following what I'm saying? Pray for their faith. He told Peter, I have prayed for thee that your faith fail thee not. He prayed for Peter's faith, not the circumstance that was coming. He said, Peter, I see the devil coming to sift you as wheat. He's coming, he's going to take you out. But I have prayed for thee. That the devil will not attack you? No. He said that your faith fail not. And he says, if your faith doesn't fail, he says, when you're converted, then he say, if you're converted. He says, when you're converted, not maybe you might be converted. No, he says, when you are converted. Because if faith does not fail, you will be converted. And the other thing I always tell people, and I must emphasize this in this meeting, you are not going to walk the life of faith and not be approved by tests and trials. Everything you are studying is going to try you one day. It's not an if, it's a when. So you have two options. Either refuse to hear the word such that when it comes, it kills you. Yeah, because that's what the Bible says. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. So you choose and say, ah, you know, if the more to whom much is given, to whom much is given, much is required. So I don't want to know much because more attacks will come to me. Yeah, it's it's fundamentally true. It's fundamentally true. Have you ever seen a street child abducted? This boy who take children for organs, organ selling. Do they touch street kids? There are mad people walking. Why don't they have those ones? You see what I'm saying? Satan is not foolish. If he wants to abduct you, look for a worker. One in the gate where there are cameras. <laughs> How many mad people have you seen being knocked by cars in your life? You probably have seen one or nine in your whole lifetime. But this mad guy is walking every day. And then a sober person, poo! This one, this was a sober one. Why is the mad one? No, look at mad people. They eat anything from the dustbin. They have this immunity it's up there. <laughs> you, it's, it was even warm. It was in a hotel. Ugh, food poisoning. Ugh, food poisoning. Ugh, uh, uh, I push up. Pray. Pray. <sighs> what? Fish. I ate fish. I ate fish. This guy. When they dump it, he eats it, and the next day he's a ninja. <laughs> because there's nothing to test. There's nothing to try him. The devil has him already. He has his mind already. How would he try? You get my point? So it's going to come. You might laugh at the brother going through it. You can judge the sister going through it. Ah, she doesn't have faith. <laughs> She's immature. Brother, your days are coming too. <laughs> it's not an if. It's a when. We will have diverse trials and tests. It might come in a different version. It might come in your child. It might come through your spouse. It might come through your body. It can come through your business. It can come through it, but it will come. So, don't be deceived that there is any message that keeps them away. It's not there. That's not faith. That's not the gospel that these men have preached. That's why he didn't say, if you go through fire. He said, when you go through the fire. Not if, when you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. He said when, but that kade or day is coming. 
So, the wisdom for the Christian is, or the wisdom of the just is, you suit up. Are you following what I'm saying? You put on the armor of God. Above all, the Bible says, taking the shield of what? Faith! Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. Not some, not a few. All. I don't care whether it's a gave it stage four cancer. It's also a dart that your faith can take out. I don't care whether they say it, it's HIV, it's incurable. It's a dart you can take out. Hypertension, you might see you by diabetes. So what? This one, you, this one can't go. Oh! On you it can go. Yeah. Tell your neighbor my story is different. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench. Give me the amplified version of that. He said, lift up over all the covering shield, sorry, over all the covering shield of faith. Or he called it saving faith. That's what I was looking for. The amplified called it saving faith. Put on the shield of saving faith. Saving faith. This one cannot kill you. Oh, saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. Everything sent, what you, what you, what you. Thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph and makes manifest the savour of his knowledge by us in every place. He always causes us, he always causes us. Nay, in all these things, he says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Shield of faith. Praise God. So we build your faith and build it and build it. I told people in the first service, I will preach you until you walk on water one day. I will preach and preach until one day you just go on water and start walking and say, there's someone works, but it must work. Glory to God. I will teach and teach and teach until you're crazy enough. Until you, people look at you and you look crazy. Because if faith doesn't get to a crazy zone, Paul said, if I'm in my mind, it is for your sake. But if I'm out of my mind, it is for God. If I'm besides myself, it is for God. Sometimes you have to get to a point and say, ah, ah, enough is enough. This one I have refused. No, let's go. <laughs> you also shield. Praise God. It hits you, it hit. Until the devil says, you know, she knows. Tell your neighbor, I know. In whom I have believed. He says, they that trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. He will not allow you to be ashamed. He will not allow you. He will not let it. He, the devil can play all he wants, but in the end, if you stick to the plan, <laughs> he won't take you out. He will not take you out. Tell your neighbor, he will not take you out. He will not take you out. He will not take you out. I don't know who, who God is talking to. He will not take you out. He will not take you out. He will not take you out. He can try to do everything, but he will not take you out. You win always through Christ which strengthens you. Now, back to what I was trying to tell us here. You have your facts and you have the truth. God does not see you seek. That's why he says the inhabitants of Zion, none shall say I am sick. They can't say it because that's not my oracle. If you understand Isaiah 33, 24, you will never say again that you're sick. You will never say it. You'll find another way. I'm feeling glorious in my head. You'll find another one. <laughs> but you will never say again that you're sick. You will never. doesn't matter what you feel and how you feel it. You will never say with your mouth that you're sick. Because saying that you're sick means you don't yet understand that you are forgiven. Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. He dealt with the sickness question back the mystery of his will is clear like poverty he became poor that you might be rich that through his poverty it might redound to your word to your richness 
you are rich now you you can say i am poor only because you don't know what god has done or you respond more to the facts of your life than the truth in your life and you can choose any of that but if you choose the facts you're going to die if that's living after the flesh that's called carnality every time you feel something and you respond to it that's what the bible calls being carnal moving by the sense the feelings of the senses what you see what you hear what you taste what you smell what you can touch that is what you're moving by if you move by the senses it means you are carnal a carnal christian if you move by what you see and what you hear only then you are a carnal christian the attacks like i said they will come they will come but they should not find you carnal you won't run away from them the bible speaks i think in mark chapter 4 where he speaks of uh the seeds you know the farmer that went to sow a seed some fell on you know rocky ground some on, 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 on good ground and some by the wayside and you know if you go to the stony he says and we're going to read the amplified and in the same way verse 16 the ones sown upon the stony ground are those who when they hear the word at once receive and accept and welcome it with joy You've heard me preach and the person stands up and says, Apostle! Yeah, that's exactly what he's talking about. I traveled, I traveled in Northern Ireland and I found it there also. I was preaching and a woman from, it, from the congregation said, Apostle! I said, I said, where did she get that from? I thought that was a Ugandan thing. It was a colloquial expression. Anyway. Then you see some, you see the videos and somebody's standing up like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Oh, you make a point and then the camera catches them in time and they're like, and then they get a pen. <laughs> Woo! You scream, exactly. Some, some even bought whistles. Sometimes I'm preaching and I hear things blowing and they're usually on my left. I don't know why. I rarely hear whistles on the right, but some noise from home. You came with a yeah, it's okay. But we are saying when the attack comes, <laughs> keep your whistle. The doctor says you're suffering from stage four cancer. You get your whistle. It cannot happen. Yeah. For some of you, the way they say you're suffering from, they just get the whistle. Whee. <laughs> Doctor, say it again. What? The apostle becomes apostle. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. They have no real root. And, and that scares me in the Amplified because some people look like they're rooted, but they're not rooted. Eh? You know, those people who look like they're born again, they know. And then things happen. Eh? Then you see another person. You say, but we thought this, this one had faith, real root. So, in definition, if we in truth have to have a conversation on what really real root is hey some people might be disqualified some people are here but they're not here mm, they're not here something can shake them off easily a room I, anything eh? something small like this can break them off they're here standing but a little small word can shake them out of faith he says and so they endure for a while when trouble all persecution arises on account of the word. Imagine those words existing in the same sentence. Trouble on account of the word. Uh, this issue has not come to kill you. It's saying you said that you believe. You sat in that Thursday service. You screamed. You blew your whistle. You were calling apostle. You wrote notes. Now, something is coming to test you against the things you were screaming on. 
You sat in the service, cross your legs, say this is the message. So he says, trouble or persecution arises on account of the world. And the Bible says they immediately are offended. They become displeased, indignant, resentful, and they stumble and fall away. They begin by firstly avoiding church. But now you don't see a uh, stream. A <laughs> stream. Uh, I'm on. Yeah, but he used to be, yeah. <laughs> I, there are things I, I know, there are things I... Then you look at the person and you say, well, what do they know? You, have you been around people who think they know? You studied the word and this word positioned you to know how to answer certain things. And those same things came in your dream. They came in on a text message. They came through the troubles in your life. And you're falling from the very thing you were taught. That is painful. And I see them all the, all the time. I see them all the time. All the time. Somebody was in the world, drinking alcohol, sleeping around, doing every kind of thing. They come to Fanero. You lead them to Christ. They confess the Lordship of Jesus. They start living right. They stop sleeping around, they leave alcohol, they start living right for two years. And the third year, you hear that the person left Fanero because they were told, Simanya, these people do this. You understand? Then you're like, you were born again from the same altar. Tick. You left that promiscuous or perverse life because of the altar. Tick. You stopped drinking because of the altar. Tick. You're going to heaven because of the same altar. Tick. Now, a silly rumor and you're falling away. You, you, you who has fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, everything that was being taught, you actually never believed it. You don't know your God. Somebody has to tell you about the God you, you should know personally. You don't have the Holy Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? And then the next thing you hear, and I've seen it firsthand. Next thing you hear, the same person went back to the bar. I wish they fell. Okay, they left into another church and became stronger. But they go back and you hear the person who could not drink on this altar is somewhere else drinking. The same things that they used to do, they are back on their lives. And they can't tell, common sense can't tell them, you lost something? Are you a better Christian? Are you walking more in love than when you sat under the teaching? Are you more forbearing? Are you more understanding? Are you more mature? No, they act more immature. Yeah, oh, there was no real root in them. Now something is checking. Did they really believe what they had? Was there really any root in them? Are they planted? Because the Bible says, He that is planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. You mean you, you didn't expect that we were going to be persecuted? You mean we were going to just preach the gospel? And you, you didn't expect persecution? Do you know how many people think out there that you tell people to sleep around? You know, have you had this, that kind of nonsense? We tell people, it's okay to sin. We recruit people with watches. We give you smile rings and watches and necklaces and then you come to Fanero and they believe it. And that's okay. But you, you should expect it. It should come. Not might, not could. I mean, even if I was the devil. How would attack Fanero? You understand what I'm saying? So, it's common sense. It's what? Common sense. So, th those are not things that faze us. Uh -uh. bring a sick man bring a man say, who doesn't know God and I will teach him God that's what I'm saying you understand you, we, you will always and I'm telling you something we, I will always outlive my persecutors it, it has, it's not something that I it, I know it that in the end one day people will compare notes and say eh, 
he's a, he has outlived. And the more you're persecuted, the more you'll grow. And your persecutor will decimate and reduce every day. That's how it happens. So it's their problem. You see what I'm saying? But it's simple things some of you should be knowing by now. And then you find somebody falling back on a very small thing. Somebody says, well, you know, I used to believe in healing. I no longer. Ee. I saw a young boy once who were raised in the same church and they even appointed him as a prophet in the church. And the boy, he grew. And in my head, I was like, this disappointment. You know when you appoint a novice, a spiritual baby? Because some pastors approve gifted people more than maturity. So this was the version of a boy who was gifted but not mature. And the next thing, I meet him. He, he, he can't greet me. He's all up there. So I asked the relative, what happened to that boy? He said, did I believe in anything called God or any man of God? He, he outgrew God. <laughs> huh? So even all, all the men of God, he sees them now as fake. He has been renewed. Yeah. In a knowledge higher. Go ahead. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. <laughs> if his science can get a crippled man out of a wheelchair or raise a dead body, I will understand. Nothing. No, there was no root in the first place. They appointed a gifted boy who had not yet been tried and proved and tested through those dimensions that are required to quality. That's why I tell people, don't be so quick to lay hands. When he says, don't make haste to lay hands, he's meaning don't be quick to appoint people. Give them time to grow. Because they run on the altar and they limp off. They limp off. Many people don't appreciate the process of ministry. They think you're just going to jump into it because you're gifted. No. And we have lost people. Some have even died because they went into realms and dimensions they, could, they didn't even understand. So something will try. One day you could wake up and there is a pain in your body but it's trying you. Then someone say, I don't believe in healing. You're like you write off a whole doctrine because it didn't work for you and because you didn't know how to work it. Uh -uh. Christianity will continue whether you're dead or not. Whether you, you denounce Jesus or not. People will still go to heaven. The only problem is we shall miss you. Don't draw back to perdition. No. Keep on your course and be a soldier. Be a fighter. Fight to the end. Fight to the end. Fight to the end. You know, Apostle, I used to come to church, but my finances, you know, busy. Oh, so you're just 100 million away from losing your faith. I would have come, but Martin left me. <laughs> Some of them, I want to first take them somewhere. And pa 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 them. I mean, lay hands on them. The Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. Lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. How can you leave the gospel because of Martin? What, what's in you? Oh, he's the one who used to bring me to church. So when he broke my heart, I also stopped. No. If God has ordained that altar to define your destiny, Satan finally was smarter than you are. He knew Martin could break that cord and he broke it. Nobody should stand in your way with God, not even me. Not even your preacher. Because we didn't die for you. So yes, the attacks will come. But when, not, not if, when they come, stand. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let me just take a few minutes and then conclude on this. So, you have two worlds here. Fact, truth. God is saying, I call those things which be not as though they were, not the things which are as though they be not. You know, some of you are in the business of denying the facts instead of establishing truth. 
God doesn't speak by denying facts. God's, the oracle of God speaks by establishing truth. And in establishing truth, truth is established speaking of those things that are not as though they already are. Meaning, go back to Abraham. He tells him, I have made you a father. You don't have children yet, but you are a father. Before whom he believed. Before whom he believed. But some of us, we are looking at the facts, the circumstances, and these are the things that are, and we are trying to speak to them as though they be not. But in this instance, it's the facts. He's saying, shift this thing. And where facts were, put truth and call those things which be not as though they were. Not the things that are as though they be not. Did you get the difference? Speak of the things that be not as though they were. Not the things that are as though they be not. In other words, it's okay. It is right to say, I don't fall sick because you're feeling pop stomach ache, right? But it's not complete. It might not save you. Might not save you. I emphasize the word might. To just say, I don't fall sick. I cannot fall sick. Why can you not fall sick? Why don't you fall sick? Explain to me. And then the person has no answer. Ah, because Apostle Grace said when you are feeling bad, you say that you are not sick. Oh, because Apostle Grace said, yeah. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And the demons beat the sons of Sceva almost to death. Why? Because they are rebuking the spirit in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. You're borrowing Paul's Jesus. You're borrowing Apostle Grace's faith. Are you following what I'm saying? You're in trouble. You are in trouble. So, I refuse to be sick. That's okay. I also speak it. But that's not the end of my confession. Confession is not just full because I say that. No. I must understand that this God to establish and manifest what I believe him to be, I must be in the zone of where he speaks and how he speaks what he speaks. And this is what he said. I call those things which be not as though they were. Firstly, he, I must understand here that he doesn't see me sick. And now he calls those things which be not, you're not well, as though you are well. So when you're sick, God will say, you're not sick, you are well. By my stripes, you were healed. If you should speak as the oracle and you're in pain, I would expect you to say, I don't fall sick, I cannot fall sick. That's not enough. Because he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. By his stripes, I was healed. Oh, I realize this. You don't even need to say that I not seek, I refuse sickness. If you, if you begin from here, you don't need to touch the other part. Did you get it? I have the life of God in me. Oh, I have the life of God in me. Why? Because it, 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 it is very clear. If you have the life of God in you, how can you fall sick? Did you get it? He speaks of the things that be not as though they are. Not the things that are not, that are, sorry, not to be. God is not taking out your sickness because in the first place he didn't see you sick. God is not taking you out of your poverty because in the first place he didn't see you poor. God is not taking away the spirit of not getting married because in the first place he didn't see that you have it. <laughs> Praise God. Do you know what it's like to walk married when you're not yet and start feeling married? and start speaking married, start hanging out with married women, start having conversations of the married, do you know what it means? 
A man can't live there and can be disappointed. It's not possible. But here, we have a bunch of people who are not married, trying to get married. They're believing God to get married. He said, God doesn't see you. He, he sees the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. He sees your end. He sees that you are married. He sees that thing before it manifests and that's what he speaks. Oh! Sorry, sometimes it hits me. Pray for me. Did you get what I just said? I will not die. I will. Who, who told you that you're going to die? Say, I have eternal life. That's a man confessing, right? I am rich. Oh, so what if you've lost 500 million? So what if the, your business got burnt? You're still rich. Nothing can ever take out enough to make you poor. That's why me, I told people, if I intimidate you now, you're in trouble. If, uh, if here where I'm at, I'm already intimidated. You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, Kazungu, did you hear that? Tell your neighbor, you have seen nothing yet. I go from glory to glory. Tell your neighbor. seen nothing yet if i scare you where i'm at devil oh, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody shout amen the devil has not seen anything yet you have not even yet started my god my god i don't know i don't know why i don't know whether i came to speak to the people in the overflow i think the people in the overflow understand me most I cannot die now. Why? Because he said with long life, he will satisfy me. I will live a long life. I will live a long life. Uh, 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 this one, this, this is, but it's stage four. Yeah, we can keep it there if you want. But I ain't dying. You understand what I'm saying? You refuse and say no. It's not taking me out. My marriage cannot fail. My son is a preacher. But he's in the back. Yes, but he's a preacher. He's a preacher. He's a preacher. You continue saying he's a minister of the gospel. But he's, he's this. Yes, but he's a preacher. He has to serve God. You keep saying, you say, you say, you say, you say it until the whole spirit realm is convinced. He told a man, you, I have made you a father. 70, 80 what? 90 what? I have made you. Sarah is past her childbearing time. And he tells her, I have made you a mother. So the, the, the challenge, the question, let me use that word, the confusion of God calling you something that you are past. It's only because he owns the past and the future and the present. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. So there are people who, if you look at them, they are past what God is calling them. And they are choosing to settle with the facts. <laughs> I switch you on in Jesus' name. Yeah, that's the power of God. That's the power of God. You have to be on. There is no way. <laughs> Some of you, you're 50, you're 60. But heaven still sees you married. You're single. Facts. Facts. You are single. But heaven still sees you married. And with children. <laughs> Glory! Yes! Your landlord gave you an eviction note, but the heaven still sees the richest man in Uganda. <laughs> and then you seek an appointment for your, with your brother. Say, brother, <clears throat> poverty, what poverty has done to me? Oh, no! Oh, no! I'll say like my daughter says, oh no, how, 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 how? God sees you rich. 
Hey, shake somebody. God sees you rich. Yes, the landlord has given you an eviction note, but that's not a vote on your destiny. Neither has it changed how God sees you. And then you come and confess contrary to the oracle. You say, poverty. Also poverty. When did you get tired of what you're not? <laughs> the sickness has been there for many years. Listen to your mouth. How can it be there when you have not recognized it? Walk to a man of God and say, even though you've had diabetes for 20 years, and tell him, thank God for my healing. Because I was healed long ago. I want you to pray with me, Apostle Grace, because I'm thanking God. God healed me long ago of diabetes. Let's thank him. That's a prayer. That's a prayer. But diabetes is killing me. God is delivering people. The spirit is moving. The anointing is moving. Things are breaking. So don't be shocked when you see certain people. Because eh? I see demons are. Afflictions are living. Those long standing issues. They are going this morning. <laughs> afternoon. Thank you Lord Jesus. I want to finish. And only because. I've spoken for so long. As it is written. He said I've met thee. A father of many nations. Read verses 18 amplified. For Abraham, human reason for hope being God, hoped in faith. Human reason had the hope that human reason would give was no longer there. And then he hoped in faith. Not that he may or, sh or could or will, that he should become the father of many nations. He knew that if I have to become this, eh, I have to take out every everything called hope based on what I see is reasonable in any form or circumstance. In other words, I have to switch off my reasoning because reasoning will ask how. Abraham switched off how? That's what he switched off. Tell your neighbor, Abraham switched off how? Somebody has literally switched. They went on somebody's brain and did like this. <laughs> there, she just put her hand on this person's head. As if she's switching off something. Don't ask God how. Let me tell you, when God started to tell us this funeral thing, you could not ask how. Because if you did, it was unbelief. Don't ask God how you're going to enter your own house. Don't ask God how your fallopian tubes are going to work. There's a lady who lost her child. We met at a Shell, Ginger Road. I think they're in, in Bali or something, manifest. She was distraught and broken because that was her last child and they had whatever the what? The tubes, eh? They had stopped them from conceiving. And I prayed with her. And the Lord spoke to me something so powerful. Now, I know people say, oh, I don't believe in it. It's your problem. It's not mine. God said, I, I can bring back that spirit. in another body. So I told her, you're going to conceive. And God is going to give you a child in the place of this body you've buried. Look at them as the child you've lost. She looked at her husband like, <laughs> tubes are tied for years. Years. At my word, they opened. With no surgery, not nothing. She just went back home and the tubes just opened. And she conceived. Was it two months? 
It's me. Don't limit God. Tell you, don't ask how. We've seen people get new wombs. Hey, don't ask God how it works. Just believe that for my sake and concerning my testimony, it must work. Say it, it must work for me. Because you should become. You should become. That's the power to become. You should become. But it says to do so, you have to go against all human reason and hope in faith. The Bible says, as he had been promised, so numberless shall your descendants be. Verses 19. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the impotence of his own body. KJV says he considered not. Don't look at your credentials. Don't look at your job. Don't look at the payments. Don't look at your color. Don't look at your skin. Don't look at your tribe. Don't look at... Oh! I want to slap somebody. He says what? Because when you consider your body, the Bible says your faith weakens. They say you have cancer. And then you say, ah, this pain. Your faith will weaken. Ascend beyond it. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says he was a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verses 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. How do you strengthen yourself in strength, in, 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 in faith? He says, giving glory to God. When a man learns to give glory to God, that's strengthening your faith. How do I say it? How would I do it? In the glory to God. I have a job. Glory to God. That's strong faith. I have a car. Glory to God. My house is here. Hey, what if it doesn't come next week? Next year? Glory to God. And then somebody comes and tells you, Apostle, I've confessed and confessed and confessed and confessed and confessed. It has refused to work. Who told you? And many people, usually 99.999999%, the day they confess it, eh, the miracle was next week. The miracle was just the next second. But they don't know that they were going through a spiritual war. Satan was trifling and starving you and frustrating you and choking to a point where you'd say, oh, I give up. And then he hears that, I give up. And then hell says, I have finished her. I have finished none to me. <laughs> Refuse. Glory to God. He did not weaken in faith when he considered so no, yes, when he considered the utter importance of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old, no unbelief or distrust made him whether, whether, sorry, doubtedly question. Yeah, I think that my mind says no unbelief or distrust, that's amplified, made him whether doubtingly question, right? In other words, he, he didn't ask God, but, but you said, why? No, no, no. He says, he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God, fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. Confident that if God said I was healed, I was healed. God says you're rich, you are rich. God says you're wise, you are wise. God says you're married, you are married. If God says you're a mother, you are a mother. Whether your, bar your womb is barren or not, if God says you're a success, you are a success. And that's the life you have to live now. Learn to just, <laughs> listen to this, last sentence. Don't consider the facts to address. Don't address your facts. Always speak yourself where you want to be as though you are there. Did you get it? Don't consider the facts and the, and the, and, and the circumstances pre present. Always speak yourself in the place you want to be as though you are already there. Never say, I will be rich one day. Uh -uh. You're rich now. Now, faith. Let's get to our feet. Are you tired? No. You have enjoyed the service? Yes. Me too. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. No, next week. It has come late. We have not dedicated children to die. Got the list late. We'll do that the next weekend. Sorry. Eh, 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 eh. 
Satan is in danger. Because the words you're going to say in these next two minutes. Ma, 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 my God. Hi, ah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready? Now I want you to speak yourself in the place you see yourself as one who is there. In other words, don't say, Father, I thank you because I'm going to get married. No. Say, Father, I thank you because I'm married and my three children and my husband. I bless you for my husband who is already, even though you're not yet what? Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. We thank you for Fanero because it's a global ministry. We are watched from across the world. Glory to God. We thank you for the members of Fanero. They are all healthy. None is sick, none is weak, none is beggarly. Wealth is ours. We are wealthy. We are wise. We are excellent in everything that we do. The favor of God is with us. His blessing goes before us. The days and months ahead of us respond to our name. Makorando, Zigaladega, Sole. Come on, raise your hands. Raise your hands and just speak words in the spirit. Speak words in the spirit. Speak words in the spirit. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. And what we've waited for. It has come to That is, it manifests even before you've seen it. My eyes have seen, my ears have heard. I have seen what the Lord has done, and what we've waited for, it has come to birth. What the Lord has done. Be quiet. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. And what we waited for, He has come to. Stand great things he has done. Great things he has done. Great things. Oh, he has done great things. Great things. Sopra de Gasso, Pradega de Gasso, Gotou. 
you to give him a thanksgiving offering. Come on! No, no, thank Jesus. Thank him. Thank him. Like you know it is done. and eat yourself some steak, some pork, some chicken, some, some good food. Praise the Lord. So if you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus and you're there and you say, you know, Apostle, as you're speaking, I feel like I need Jesus in my life. I believe God has convinced you, convicted you. You don't need any more words. I just need to give you the opportunity to come and I pray with you. For us here in Fanel, we do it openly. Not all eyes closed and heads bowed. No, Jesus was crucified when all eyes were open. And all their heads were raised. So if the Bible says, if you deny me before my father, before men, I will deny you before my father. I don't want you to get to a point where Jesus denies you because you, you, you wanted everyone not to see you. No, 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 no. There's nothing ashamed. You're receiving eternal life. And there's no best time. Today is the time. Now is the hour. If you're there and decide I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior, come and I pray with you. Come.
me tell you, do you know why these people are screaming? I'll tell you why. Because we don't regret the day we said yes to Jesus. This is the best decision you are going to make for your life. There is no perfect time. This was your perfect time. And you're going to see what God is going to do in your lives every day. It's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Repeat these words after me, those of you who are here. Now I have some people from Katanga, right? I'll ask Pastor Ronnie, the man with the Luganda, the English. I never heard him speak. He speaks so, you know, like he's, yeah. He speaks so British. Repeat this as after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for your word today. And today, I choose to believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and he was raised for my glory. Today, I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, these people have begun a good journey. I pray that you'll keep them, preserve them, change them, transform them, heal them. Whatever spirit of destruction, I've seen some of whom are sick here. You spirit of sickness, go in the name of Jesus. Those that are dealing with poverty and strife and struggle, today it has changed you a new creature. Everything you have been dealing with in your family background, today you've entered a new family and God starts a new story. Your hands will not struggle. Witchcraft is not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, those of you who have made this prayer, you're going to go with these ushers. I want to take an, uh, just a minute to, to, to take your names and numbers. You'll meet a pastor there who will have some words with you. The best gift you can give yourself, keep coming to church. Just make sure you come to church. Like you've been feeding your body, start feeding your spirit man too. You have great days ahead of you. See you. There's that song I want to sing. No, you can go. You can go. But it just come to my spirit. He says, The longer I serve, the sweeter he uh -huh. Each day like heaven, my heart overflows. The Service is over, by the way. You can go home. The first verse. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Fenero.org. Org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Narrow. Make Manage.